My name is Arif Hassan. I'm an architect and planning consultant working in Karachi. Well, the world has changed a lot because this whole idea of a world-class city, there's a whole agenda attached to it. It is a city where there are global events that seeks direct foreign investment and has a very big uh, space allocated to in it because of direct foreign investment to the corporate sector. And this evolution has taken place during a period when there is a big growth of the middle class. So with this agenda in place, wherever money comes for, from for a project or for an event, it is accepted and it is transformed into a project. So the old idea of having a planning process into which these things fitted is no longer there. So in Istanbul you will have Formula One, in Delhi you have the Olympics, and these determine the shape and form of your city, especially related to transport projects which are really no longer a part of a larger plan. You get the money for it, you float a tender, and that determines, the contractor really determines the direction that the project takes. So this is how cities, at least the cities I know, are developing and evolving. Uh, because you have uh, this capital driving these projects. Therefore, a lot of old considerations of environment and social conditions are now overlooked. Uh, these are the negative aspects of it. The positive aspects is that the mayors can show that something is happening, something big is happening, something grand is happening. Uh, but the environment suffers, and I think the low income groups suffer also as a result. Actually, the choice of sanitation as quote-unquote entry point was really not determined by the project itself. It was determined by the people. This was their priority. The important thing here is that we were able to divide sanitation into two different components. One was transfers and treatment plants. That was the job of the state. And the other was neighborhood infrastructure, sewers and toilets. This was the job of the community. The community financed the internal infrastructure, what we called internal infrastructure, that is toilets and neighborhood sewers. And the state supported uh, the program with what we called external infrastructure, with treatment plants and trunk sewers. I think this empowered the community because in our opinion at that time and which has been borne out by uh, the process that evolved afterwards was that if people can collect money, if they can determine how to use money, then they become empowered. They acquire new relations with the state, they acquire new relations amongst each other. And I think it was this component sharing model rather than the cost sharing model which is usually followed that was responsible for taking the communities into doing other things. Uh, I think this is a, the lesson that we learnt. And that same component sharing model was then applied to education, it was applied to security, it was reply, applied to housing, uh, that the community does something and the informal sector or the state does something else in support of the community. So there is no overlapping in expenditures. Community expenditure remains separate, the state and informal sector's investment remains separate. So there are two things here. One is technology. You have to be, for this model to be successful, you have to decentralize technology. 
and miniaturized technology. And the other is management, a management model, where the community can manage its own affairs, manage its own investments. And for this, it needs guidance. And for technology, it needs techno technical support. So this is how it became successful. In different contexts, the same principles have been applied. People have been trained in management and they have been trained in technology. And the same principles of component sharing rather than cost sharing have been applied and they have been successful. The problem with most projects is that they try to excel. They try to develop everything themselves. There are not enough funds to do this on a large enough scale. Because of the component sharing model, in the case of Urangi and its uh, replication projects, you might call them, uh, you, we reach out to approximately 3 million people today, if not more. If, on the other hand, it had been a conventional project, I doubt if we would even have gone up to 500,000 people.